we're going to get into lesson 25. Um, I planned on having guest teachers, but with our um, field trip today, we just did not, what's going on over here, did not have time. So yours truly, I don't know what's happening, um, is going to do the video and we're going to start dividing um, numbers with fractions and it's going to be great as <clears throat> always, when we start a new skill, we're going to be doing it very um, pictorially. We're going to be doing modeling so that we can build that understanding. We're not going to just leap right into traditional algorithm. That is not the Eureka way. You guys know that. So just enjoy the ride. Um, <coughs> uh, the next few lessons, we're really just thinking about what does it mean to divide a whole number by a fraction? That's kind of a lot to wrap your mind around. I know a few of you already know the traditional algorithm, and that is awesome for you. You get a high five. <laughs> um, so definitely keep that with you, but also I'm going to challenge you to go beyond that and really understand conceptually what does it mean to divide a whole number by a fraction. Hmm. Um, so we're going to be do doing modeling, as I said. We're going to start connecting to the traditional traditional algorithm pretty quickly. Um, and then we're also going to use multiplication to check our work. So are you ready? Here we go. And be here. We're starting off with very, very basic numbers. Just want to keep it simple as we uh, begin to kind of conceptualize this. So we have four divided by one half. Really what we're asking here is how many halves fit inside four holes? So let's take a look at what, oh my word, Mrs. Calamaris needs to work on her rectangles. Oh, so let's take a look at what four holes looks like. You guys are very familiar with the fact that this is one, two, three, four holes. Within each of these boxes, we have one hole. One hole. One and one. So what we're going to do is divide each of our units, our just single ones, into halves because we're looking at how many halves fit into four holes. Ready? Don't look away. This goes quickly. Boom! I just split that into half. One, two halves within the hole. You guys know that one, two halves live inside one hole. One, two halves, live inside one hole. One, two halves. Okay, very interesting. So we started with that burgundy or that maroon color. I labeled our four. And then we separated each of our holes into halves, into two equal slices. So now let's answer these questions. There are blank halves in one hole. Okay, so don't overthink this. Um, Eric, what do you have? Two, thank you. Yes, there are two halves in one hole. And you guys, I know that this is not rocket science, but it's important to establish this so that we have a very deep understanding of what this expression means. There are blank halves in four holes. Interesting, let's just count what we did. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight halves in four holes. <coughs> <laughs> this is interesting. If 4 is 1 half, what is the whole? 8. If 4 is 1 half, 4 is 1 half, what is the whole? Well, the whole would be 8. Cool. Do you guys kind of see what's going on there? Uh, let's take a look here. <clears throat> I'm going to change colors. Let's see how I do on my rectangle. So now we have 2 divided by 1 fourth. 2 divided by 1 fourth. What we're asking is how many 1 fourths live inside 2 holes. So, wish me luck. I'm drawing a rectangle. Oh, this one's a little bit better. Oh, good rectangle, Mrs. Calamaris. So, we have 2 holes. We have 1, 2. This entire tape diagram represents 2 holes. Now we're wondering how many fourths fit inside 2 holes. Well, in order to decipher that, we're going to have to break. Oops, I did not want to do that color. I wanted to do this color. We're going to break each of our holes, just one hole, into four pieces. So this is one hole. This is one hole. And inside each of our one holes, we're going to 
break it into four equal parts because what we're trying to figure out is how many fourths live inside of two. Okay, so I divided our two holes, first and two single units, and then our single units, one and one, I divided into one, two, three, four uh, quarters or fourths. So now let's figure out, well, we'll answer the questions. There are blank fourths in one hole. Okay, so here we have our one hole. You guys already know this though. You guys know that there are one, two, three, four fourths in one hole because we've been working with fancy versions of one hole. You guys know that four fourths is equal to one. No problem there. There are blank fourths in two holes. Okay, so one, two, three, four fourths in one hole. That means we have five, six, seven, eight fourths in two holes. Okay, cool. Is this making some sense? It's pretty logical stuff. We're just going to take it one step at a time, though. Okay, so if two is one fourth, oh, my rectangle there goes again. If two, let's look, think about this. If two is one, two, three, out of four, what is the whole? Well, this is Galamares. It's going to be eight. Cool. Okay, good. I like this. Let's uh, divide. <coughs> Excuse me. Then multiply to check. <clears throat> okay. So it does not say two model, but I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment. Oh, it does say model. Weird that the fonts aren't the same. Divide, then multiply to check. Oh, and model. Okay, great. No problems, Mrs. Calamares. Um, so let's do five divided by one half. We're wondering, hmm, how many one halves can fit inside five? Also, I want to model because I need to work on my rectangles. That one is actually pretty good, you guys. Okay, so we have this rectangle. This entire re rectangle represents five. Five holes. We want to know how many halves fit inside five holes. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and slap, slice, slap, slice each of these. Oh, gosh. I haven't done a video for a while. It feels like I'm kind of losing. Okay, let's try that again, Mrs. Calamares. Focus, concentrate. You've got this. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to divide this one into two equal parts. Great. I'm going to divide this one unit into two equal parts. Done. And uh-huh. Okay, getting better. Yes, beautiful. So we have this entire tape diagram representing five. And now we split each of our single units into half because we're wondering, oh, how many halves fit into five? Now let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Interesting. Okay. Five divided by one half is ten. Now we're going to multiply to check. And here's how we're going to multiply to check. We're going to multiply our quotient by one half. And cross your fingers. We want to end up with five. If, if we don't end up with five, something's gone terribly long wrong along the way. So 10 times 1 is 10. Okay, good. And then that's over 2. Simplify 10 over 2. 10 divided by 2. Micah, thank you. It's 5. Beautiful. Okay, good. Check. We're good. Because after all, you guys, 5 divided by 1 half is taking boop, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we, I shouldn't say taking, we are finding 10 units um, when we divide 5 by 1 half. Okay, so let's look at, oh, this one looks good. I like the number 8. 8 divided by 1 third. I am going to draw the best rectangle that my left hand can. Uh, so this is going to represent 8. We're wondering, hmm, how many 1 thirds fit inside 8? In order to do that, fifth graders, we have to draw eight first. So we have one, two, three. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to do one of these tricks. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. So now we have eight holes. Secret word is bulldogs. And this is blue? Okay. 
So now we want to figure out, hmm, how many thirds live inside, one thirds live inside eight? In order to do that, we're just going to chop each of our single units into three equal parts. There we go. Okay, it's a lot of chopping. My eyes are kind of going cross because I made this pretty small. And okay, so eight divided by one third. How many one thirds do we have here? Well, I know that this entire tape diagram represents eight. And I know that I chopped each of my single units into thirds. So let's think about that. What I have now is eight um, times three, because we have eight units and we chopped each of our slices in each of our boxes into three equal slices. So we should have 24, but let's check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Cool. So we had eight units and we multiplied essentially them by three. So eight divided by one third is 24. That's pretty exciting. Um, or in other words, there are 24 one-thirds that fit inside of eight. Let's use uh, the multiplication to check just like we did up here. So we're going to take uh, 24 and we're going to multiply 24 by one-third. I'm sorry, not, uh, excuse me, left hand, one-third, not one-eighth. And let's see what we get. So we have 24 up top. We have three down below. 24 over three equals eight. Pretty cool, guys. Okay, good. This number and this number are the same. I hope this is making some sense. Please know that we're going to work, continue working on this tomorrow. Um, you know, I think I'm just going to call it a day. You guys uh, enjoy this modeling. Come back tomorrow, Thursday, ready to work. Can't wait for it. It's going to be a great day, and I'll uh, see you then.